with your flash jabs. Wow, Kellogg! I mean, you have really upped your game by like a ton! The difference in their abilities was clear. I knew it. Kalon's got an advantage with strikes. He is known as the toughest man in the world! Presenting Andrew the Brick Wall! Tosa! What is up, my friends? How y'all doing? This is your boy, Sosa Pones, coming at you with the Kengen Omega Chapter 283 new release. It was released just a few minutes ago. I have a new source for this, so I'm going to be covering these chapters. Every time that there's not a Baki Rahan chapter, because I'm still a Baki fan, I have been loving Kengen so much more as of late. I've been appreciating it, watching it over and over again, but I'm still the Baki OG. I still prefer that one. I'm going to cover that one. So when there's not a chapter or something really important going on that day, then I'm going to cover Kengen Omega. And there is so much good stuff going on right now. And I'll be covering that in just a little bit, especially a good edit at the end. So make sure you stick around. It'll be completely worth it. But yeah, we have Kaolong Wongsawat rematching Kano Agito, the rematch of the century. And people are so hyped for it. And it looked like it might already be over, but we already know that Kano Agito is so tough. He's going to be able to just keep on going and going and going. And we all know that Kaolong Long learned that the hard way. Neither of them can afford to lose. Take your stance. Who will be crowned the champion, Kaolon or Kano? And we have this wonderful announcement right here. And the announcer, her presentation, man, that's why I like to come to Kengen Omega to see. And we continue with the dragon shot. We left off the last time, and it looked like he was able to get the dragon shot off. But it just seems that Kaolong Wangsawa, while he still takes damage from it, titled as his sword... He just seems to sidestep it and just com and completely disregards it. And this happens multiple times throughout the fight and throughout the uh, chapter. And it's weird. I'm sure they're going to be able to explain it to us because Kalon uh, is fighting the uh, Formless form and he seems to have accounted for it. And we all know that Formless isn't, you know, the uh, the only thing that Kano can do. Like, he can do other things, but then when it comes to striking, he pretty much has no choice to use it because he just still isn't on Kalong Wansawa's level, and that was proven the last time. And it broke his heart, but Kano is here to win more decisively. He's here to get that dragon shot off. And so I'm just excited to be able to cover this with y'all. And we have other great news, like I said before, whenever it comes to the election. And I know, I know that I'm not going to be getting too political whenever I cover these it just happens to be a coincidence that this great news that the big bad orange man seems to have gotten reelected, even though we all know that they're going to still try to cheat and they might not even get him in there but apparently he won the popular vote and it's just so decisive that they can't say anything so with that great news please consider joining my memberships for exclusive Kengen and other cool content chat rooms all sorts of cool perks on there just your consideration would be highly appreciated if I was to get a dollar from everyone who liked this video then I'd be able to do these videos full-time bring y'all even better quality content and th the economy is going to be starting to get a lot better <laughs> with this great news get on with it yes get on with it yeah! But I understand time still might be tough with you with all the previous creepy Joe inflation and all, even though it will be getting better soon. But at least subscribe, hit the bell for notifications on all so you can see all my future content. Smash that thumbs up, like button, leave a comment, support the mess up YouTube background, the share this around there, better that you know. Follow me on my social media platform. Get on with it! All right, let's get into it. The check hooks by Kaolong Wansawa are still happening. And this is the part where the announcer is just like, he sidestepped that? He just was able to negate that damage? And it's still shows that he still is taking damage but just not nearly as much as they would think and they're talking about how did he sidestep that what uh, technique is he using this is weird we don't see Kalon doing anything and yet he's doing all this damage to Kato in return uh, Kano and yeah, not Kato Whew, and boy getting the Baki characters mixed up <laughs> it looks like he's taking damage that's the formless style you're telling me he managed to copy his moves in the 11th hour 
Wow, Yamashita claims Kalon is just amazing, and he is amazing. What a knack for fighting. And both of them are already exhausted. Like, these chapters are going by fast. A lot of people have been complaining about the pacing I have seen about certain fights, and they are going super fast within this tournament. They were expecting the Kano fight, his previous one, to be a lot more. But yeah, they're both completely exhausted. They both have taken damage from the fight before, so it's not exactly as it was before, but it's still just who wants it more. And, you know, the damage is, you know, just getting super severe, super quick. And yet, they both again pressed on. Yet again, and again, and again. They keep on pressing on, pressing on. By the way, pause the video and look at the manga panel and then continue if I remove too fast for you. But yeah, they're breathing hard. They are giving it everything they've got. This is all about who wants it more, basically. And I love those types of battles. You should check on my fights after we're done with this uh, chapter review because I got some good ones and I grind people out. That's the way I do it more of the t um, most of the time. And yeah, he actually is saved by the king or one of his counselors or guards or something like that. You deserve so much better than to serve, and serve your life in squalor here. Will you join us instead? And he becomes the sword for his majesty, as we pointed out. And he takes great pride in that. We are Rama the 12th. I think that's how you do it. It could be in the 8th or something, but they usually put it at the head of the X. So no, this would be 12, I think. This is how you count it. Hopefully I don't look too dumb right here, but I'm not even going to edit it out because I just keep it real with y'all. We cannot give you everything that you ask for, but we will give you every opportunity. What do you mean everything he asked for? Just being able to have this opportunity is everything in the world to him. He's not going to just keep on, you know, fighting for pittance and stuff. So, yeah, that that's awesome. And uh, we get a little bit of a flashback where he is the sword of his majesty. I was allowed to serve under his predecessor once uh, the original guy, you know, after his, he passed away. And uh, he served Rama the 13th, and his majesty's sword. I, I like the audio that they do with the Netflix. It's a good, during that good speech, it's awesome. A dude that takes precedence over my identity as a fighter. Yeah, he finds uh, serving his country and his uh, king far more important than anything, which is interesting motivation-wise, because he's more like me. He fights for other people, not really for himself, but he still takes great pride in this. He wants this rematch. And for someone who's as chill and as low-key as Kalalon, you know, to be want this so bad to actually want to be violent, that's a really big deal. I am his sword. I will not be broken again. And they clash at each other and they both go for the elbow. Boom, boom. And it looks like that they both hit each other at the same time, but we all know that that's not how it's going to be. They're not going to take it equally. And we all know that Kaolan Wangsawa has to at least win this rematch. We know that <laughs> Itagaki can definitely surprise us, and he probably will with something. Maybe they'll make it a draw or something like that. But Kalon's probably going to win the rematch, and it looks like that he is. Does the damage mean nothing to him? He just keeps on sidestepping or keeps on using some sort of really elusive technique with all these sidesteps and just, you know, negating the damage that Kano puts on him and doing his own counters. It looks like he gets the elbow right here. It might look like a left uppercut, but he's staggering Kano, and his chin is way up in the air, and he's just getting his butt kicked. And he leaps inside Kano's range. He's not letting him get any space, and points out that Kano injured his forearm by trying to block one of the uh, strikes, but now it's almost going limp. Now it's super weak. It can't take another one, and he might not be able to use it for anything at this point, so the trade-off might not even be worth it. He wants to avoid uh, fighting within the punching range. He wants to go back to cooking, but you are going to be kicking with Kalong? No way. So you're probably just going to get on the inside and use the elbows, which is why he wanted to do it in the first place, but they're not even guarding. They're barely missing each other's vital points. So they're kind of having one of the manly brawl types. They're still dodging things. Kano keeps on trying to get that dragon shot off, but fully dodging was no longer on the table. And he still is able to do the sidestep. They're still thinking about the techniques. They're still thinking about their footwork. They're still thinking about where they should place it. Everything. They could only barely avoid taking each other's hits to the vitals. And Kalon goes in again, and it seems like he has a strike going on. Whoosh! 
and the sword has struck again on Count Ogito, and it's still kind of eluding us on what exactly the strike was. It was Kalong who broke this stalemate. So yeah, and he is showing this brain shaking impact. So Kano looks like he's probably about to take his third L, the Sword of Rama, the Thai God of War, the Avatar of Garuda seems to have delivered finally ran through Kano Agita with some sort of punch now I don't think that no matter how strong <laughs> Kao Long is that he could just actually punch through Kano I think the muscles are just too thin but maybe he used a knife hand maybe he used a different attack or maybe the gut punch was just so bad on him and it's as if he punched right through him he's not actually bleeding we'll see maybe I'll make a post about it in my community tab because I get a lot of interactions through there too it's lots of cool stuff on there like polls and all everything like that but yeah that's basically it and thank you all for going to the very end y'all are going to enjoy the cool edit that i have in store for y'all but like i said before a million times sub like hit the bell and all comment share all that good stuff consider joining my memberships follow me on my social media platforms like facebook rumble twitter instagram tiktok big shoot honestly x and rumble are the most important ones now especially with the new tide of the culture and revolution coming through and yeah that's basically it i appreciate y'all listening to me rant and i can't wait to see what y'all's feedback is and Check out my, the rest of my channel. There's something on here for everybody, like a lot of Kengen uh, fights, and I got more coming up. But also, Baki the Grappler, Dragon Ball, as I just showed previously before. Political humor, obviously, from what you've seen. UFC fight coverage, my own fights, like I said before in the video. And that's basically it. I'll see y'all later. Peace out, my friends. Absolutely incredible. You've gotten so much farther ahead of me now. Yeah! All right. Many thanks to you, Kaolan. That's it! No more hesitating! I know what I need to do now! They're eating the dogs, they're eating the cats. Eat the cat, eat, eat the cat, eat the cat. They're eating the cats, they're eating the dogs. Eat the cat, eat, eat the cat.